Welcome everyone to our 23rd graduation ceremony on this day, September the 11th, 2021. My name is Chiara Maripodi, and I'm the director for the Center for Lifelong Learning here at the California Institute for Human Science. We're all here to celebrate the successes of our graduates and their contributions to their own development and that of the collective. Our graduates show outstanding tenacity and dedication to the development and exploration of the nature of reality. This will be evidenced throughout this wonderful celebration here this afternoon. At this time, I would like to introduce to you our president, Dr. Thomas Brophy, who will join me in welcoming all of you and the graduates. Dr. Brophy. Yeah, thank you, Kiara, and welcome everyone. Welcome to all the faculty, distinguished CHS faculty who I've seen here uh, to honor our, their graduates. Welcome to CHS deans and administrators. Welcome to CHS trustees, Mr. Kashwakura, Mr. Subiando, Dr. Jalesic, Dr. Laporte, Dr. Gold, and I think I've seen Dr. Motiyama here too. Most importantly, welcome to all of our graduates and their distinguished guests, whom we all are today. We're here for a ceremony of celebration, but today is also a solemn anniversary. So to honor that occasion, I would like to call on CIHS's trustee board chair, Dr. Richard Jalesic, to lead us in a moment of silence as today is the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Hello, everyone. If we could just center ourselves for a moment and just be in that place of inner peace, draw yourself in. We'll just take a moment here. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jalesic. And today is also a day of celebration, celebration for and celebration of our CHS graduates. Our celebration today contrasts greatly with the divisions that we continue to see around us, all around us in the world the tragic situation in Afghanistan and its region. And here at home, our citizens have become more polarized politically than at any other period in our lifetimes. At CHS, we believe these types of divisions that plague our society and our world can not be solved merely by external means through technology, military force, or dollars, merely external solutions can never work unless they are accompanied by internal changes in our shared values, attitudes, perceptions, and beliefs. This need to balance and to integrate deeply the inner life and the outer life is of course fundamental to the principles that have guided CHS since its founding. And 2021 is a momentous year in the life of CHS as a university. The Western Association of Schools and Colleges granted CIHS accreditation in 2021. Dr. Hiroshi Motoyama founded this institute, CIHS, to research and educate about what it means to be and what it means to grow as a human in all aspects, inclusively for the betterment and advancement of humans and humanity. Now, by joining the ranks of regionally accredited universities, the highest accreditation status in the United States higher education, CHS is enabled even more powerfully now to advance its founding mission to integrate science, spirit, and consciousness for the development of the human being and the advancement of a sustainable global society. 
this is an exciting and profound time, not only for CIHS as a university, but for the world of higher education generally. There is a subtle but profound change taking place as scientific and scholarly communities are driven by a realization of the fundamental role of consciousness in the nature of reality and the importance of bridging the gaps of understanding between the two worlds of materiality and human consciousness, even uh, in revolutionary ways. As a consciousness inclusive university community dedicated to compassionate service, we welcome you, the graduates, your guests, and all here to CIHS's commencement. And now I will pass it back to our Master of Ceremonies, Chiara. Thank you, Dr. Brophy, for a wonderful speech. And at this time, I would like to invite our student speaker address, Julie Dargis. Julie is a published author and is engaged in many humanitarian endeavors worldwide. She promotes the health and wellness of women, children, adolescents around the world, and has for quite some time. In addition to her unique ability to guide people through instability and uncertainty, Julie is an accomplished writer and poet. Welcome, Julie. Thank you, Chiara. My folio. President Brophy, committed members of the Board of Trustees, esteemed faculty and chair of the Faculty Senate, incomparable administrators, dedicated students, especially my fellow graduates, family members, friends, ladies, and gentlemen, it is an honor to address you. We all have a story of how we arrived at CIHS. Many of these stories include warm memories of working or studying with Dr. Motayama. I, however, did not have this pleasure. In the spring of 2015, I was in Washington, D.C. when I realized that I could not sustain my workaholic lifestyle without causing continued decline to my physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. In September of that same year, I packed up my life and moved across the country. The day after I arrived in Southern California, unbeknownst to me, Dr. Motayama made his transition. Nevertheless, within weeks, I found the school and the following January, I began my PhD program in integral health. Although I like to believe that Dr. Motayama and CIH, CIHS found me. Although I never met Dr. Motayama, I firmly felt his presence throughout my tenure as a student. During a course on consciousness studies in the great hall that once was the library on campus, we went into meditation. In my meditative state, I saw Dr. Motayama in his office. He was standing next to a wall of shelves with his hand placed lightly on a stack of papers. More than a year later, when I entered the office for the first time, the room was exactly as I had imagined it. And yet, in the words of Carl Jung, one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. This message became extremely prescient over the past 19 months as we navigated the COVID-19 pandemic with a newly formed virtual and global community. At home and abroad, students at CIHS continued their studies with fortitude and focus. They continued to make meaning of their lives so that they could positively affect the lives of others. In a speech of this sort, if, you, if Google were your muse, Following the incorporation of a quote, there might be a suggestion to use humor. If I were to heed this advice, I might uh, offer up a setup such as a palliative care doctor, a Buddhist nun, and the founder of a nonprofit in Tibet all walk into a bar. These lives, however, do not end with a punchline. These lives converged with mine. In 2017, when my father was 90 years old, to prepare myself for his transition, I took a course on conscious living and dying. I learned of the beauty of impermanence as well as how to respectfully and spiritually care for the dying. Lessons that would be put to the test the following year when I spent six weeks at my father's side during the final months of his life. In the final paper for the course, I included a fictionalized case study of being a volunteer at the Zen Hospice in San Francisco under the tutelage of Dr. B.J. Miller, a palliative care doctor who had founded the Zen Hospice. 
B.J. Miller also taught at the University of California, UCSF Medical Center. In time, Dr. Padma, the instructor for the course and the Buddhist nun in this story, would become the chair of my dissertation committee. And in 2020, Dr. Padma would leave CIHS to take up the role of resident chaplain at UCSF. As we transition into the larger world of possibilities, I'd like to introduce you to Arlene Saman. 23 years ago, Arlene met the Dalai Lama. When she asked him what she could do to be of service, he told her that the women were dying while giving birth in Tibet and they needed her help. Arlene traveled to Tibet where she founded One Heart Worldwide. When I met Arlene after accepting a full-time role with the organization in July of this year, I told her that I had recently completed a doctoral program. Being that she was a Buddhist, I shared with her the highlights from my paper on conscious living and dying. Arlene was fascinated. She had been a volunteer at the Zen Hospice in San Francisco and BJ Miller was a dear friend of hers. Being a student at CIHS allowed me to critically explore the many dimensions of synchronicity. I learned that transformation is a state of being, but most importantly, my fellow graduates, I learned from you. Over the past five years, as we navigated the challenges of student life, the wellspring of support that you so generously offered me gently steered me back to center. This is why, if you should ever wonder how you will cope with adversity in the future, I am here to remind you that you need only look within. Trust that no matter what happens in your life, you will experience boundless success. I offer this to you in this moment because in this moment you are boundless. Crossing the threshold of graduation, we continue on the path of becoming, each of us a whole on, simultaneously a whole in and of ourselves while also being part of a larger whole. At CIHS, we seek evidence-based approaches to disrupt the paradigms in health that focus on tackling illness. Findings from my doctoral research on the topic suggest that shifting one's mindset from tackling illness to considering how to cultivate one's own wellness contributes to the creation of a new paradigm of integral health, one that promotes self-directed, soul-based healing. During the pandemic, as the ground was shifting below us, we used our curiosity and determination to break new ground, exploring the mysteries of subtle energy, uh, researching the art of healing, and incorporating the brilliance of Dr. Motoyama's vision based on a framework of the multidimensional body composed of equal parts, mind, body, and spirit to realize our fullest potential. We also came to understand, in doing so, we came to understand that the universe is energy and we are made up not only of stardust, but the essence of song. We also came to understand that as universal citizens, we have a responsibility to dig deep within our inner selves in order to excavate our own healing, making conscious and bringing to light lessons to be shared with others. As students, by engaging with the depths of our own consciousness, we proactively created healing waves that expanded out into the world around us. As practitioners, engaging with others through service is how we are constructing altruistic, altruistic pathways for all to walk upon. In closing, a palliative doctor, a palliative care doctor, a Buddhist nun, and the founder of a nonprofit did not walk into a bar, but they may have walked into a tea room. It's also likely that they strolled along the same beach in San Francisco, tracing the essence of each other's footprints, much like we are virtually walking upon the footprints of the CIHS graduates who have come before us today. Together, we are part of a committed group of visionaries who each share in the success of our recent accreditation. This incredible achievement, which was so aptly led by so many within the CIHS community, is a triumph which we can each, uh, for which we each also can be proud. Our staunch commitment and sturdy belief in the historic vision of this unique institute has resulted in the profound experience of being among the first group of graduates to be presented with degrees from an accredited CIHS. Congratulations, my fellow graduates, for your remarkable academic accomplishments today. It has been an honor to walk with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julie Douglas. It is 
wonderful to listen to your speech and sharing your transformational experience at CIHS. At this time, I would like to invite Dr. So Sean Espion Huggins, who will be awarding a degree in Integral Studies in Comparative Religion and Philosophy. It's my pleasure to award the Bachelor of Arts in Integral Studies to Beth um, Ungen Leader. Um, Beth, you can now move your tassel from right to left. And if you want, you can say a few words. You're all good? All right, awesome. Well, congratulations to you. It's a big accomplishment. We're very proud. Um, so now with, with Beth receiving her diploma, I would like um, to um, award the Master of Arts in Comparative Religion and Philosophy to Tony Benning, um, whose thesis is entitled Sant Sapai and Ubermanche, a study of Guru Gobind and Nietzsche Zarustra through the lens of the monomyth. Tony, you can now move your tassel from right to left. And if you want, you can share a few words with us. Thanks very much, Sean. Yeah. Um, you know, it's been a real pleasure to have been involved with this fantastic institution for the last four years. Um, and there's quite a few people I'd like to thank. Um, first and foremost, the, um, the professors who taught the various uh, courses. So I'd like to thank Dr. Brophy, Dr. Jelicic, uh, Dr. Padma, uh, Dr. Bustos, and Dr. Marley Burgess. You know, I, I was not in a rush to complete this program. I, I, I took my time. I think I'd, you know, I, I, I don't think I ever did more than one course in any given semester, but, um, you know, I think that works out well because every course that you do at CIHS is so, is so enriching in itself, right? Um, that you just want to savor it. And uh, I, I don't think it's ever necessary to kind of take on too much. And, and I remember discussing this with some of my colleagues, you know, including, uh, including Francesca, who's here today. You know, you, that there's a certain advantage in taking, taking just one course at a time and really taking the time to sort of process and digest what you've learned because because the learnings are so, you know, because they're so rich. Um, so, you know, so, so, I, so I thank the professors a great deal and I just want to thank all the students as well because as Dr. Dargis was saying, you know, I couldn't agree more. We, we learn from each other. So I want to thank, you know, I've taken courses with everyone who's here today. So I want to thank Kate and, uh, and Nader and, uh, and Francesca and Dr. Dargis. Um, so yeah, it's been a wonderful experience. And uh, for most of the time when I was on this course, it was Dr. Padma who was the course director. And you know, she was she was wonderful and supportive. And one of my regrets is that I that I didn't have, you know, I I I, I wish I could have spent more time with with you, uh, Sean. You know, it was only yeah. it was only relatively later on in my time at uh, at CIHS that, that you took over the helm of yeah. the directorship. And, uh, you know, I would have loved to have had more time with you and learning from you and, and interacting. So, so that's my only regret, but, uh, mm. but it's been a wonderful experience. and I'm, I'm really grateful to the, uh, to the Institute. Mm. Thanks, Tony. And please, yeah, you're absolutely right. We, we didn't get to connect much because of me coming in when I did, but please reach out to me and let's stay in touch or email. There's always plenty to, to share and engage um, even as an alumni. So please don't be a stranger. Um, and again, congratulations to you. Thank you. And, and with that, I'll turn it back to you, Kiara. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Espion Huggins. And uh, Dr. William Howe, I'd like to invite you, who you will be awarding the degree in psychology. Thank you, Kiara. It is my pleasure to present the one degree that we are awarding in psychology to Netta Panahande. And Netta, uh, would you kindly move your tassel from the right side to the left? Congratulations, Netta. Thank you. I might note, by the way, that our faculty have enjoyed working with Netta. One faculty member said, Quote, she is driven, thoughtful, and kind, and is a model CIHS student who embodies the values of spirituality, community, and academic excellence. Netta, I should add, 
is now enrolled in the doctoral degree program at, in psychology at CIHS, and we're delighted to have her in that program. Netta, would you like to say a few words? Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Howe. I just wanted to shout out to everyone that's contributing to the CIH team to taking us to the next level. We're now accredited and I'm so thankful to be at this institute. Thank you, Netta. Thank you. Now back to you, Kiara. Thank you, Dr. Howe. I'd like to invite Dr. Thomas Brophy, who will be awarding the degrees of integral health. Dr. Brophy. Thank you, Kiara. Uh, just a quick programmatic note. After I award the degrees in the School of Integral Health, I will introduce our uh, commencement speaker, Josu Biando. Okay, so now, congratulations, Master of Arts in Integral Health, Kate Celeste, whose thesis title is Evaluation of an Online Holistic Self-Care Workshop for Registered Nurses, the Conscious Nurse Project research proposal. Kate, uh, please move your tassel from right to left, and it'd be wonderful if you'd like to say a few words. This mirror is very confusing. I think I have it right now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Brophy, and I'm just so excited that and thankful that this school and this program found me because I wasn't looking. <laughs> and just really grateful to all of my instructors. I know Dr. Jelicic and yourself and Dr. Maharis and um, the ones that can't be here today. And especially Dr. Ms. Michelle Faber, who was my thesis advisor. I had a lot of fun working on my thesis, a lot of fun, a lot of stress, you know what it's like, but in the end, I think that the result is going to be very beneficial um, for my colleagues. I'm really looking forward to launching this uh, program for them, um, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, and just to let you all know that I am always talking about CIHS. I'm always encouraging people to look into your your offerings of your programs and the different you know, the different schools and areas. So um, I'm really hopeful that in the future, there'll be even a larger Canadian um, student body for you. So that's it. Thank you so much. Congratulations to everybody else too. Thank you. Now, congratulations to Master of Arts in Integral Health, Francesca Peretta, whose thesis title is The Integral Model of Holistic Perinatal Care Establishing Positive and Transpersonal Birth Experiences in the U.S. Birthing Industry. Please move your tassel from right to left and uh, be wonderful you'd say a few words. Uh, thank you, Dr. Brophy, and thank you, everyone else. Um, I just want to echo everything that my other fellow grads have said before. Um, it seems that a lot of us have found CIHS in very synchronistic ways and have all gone through some kind of trans, transformational experience in being a student and being a professional at this now institute or this now university. So um, yeah, I just, I feel really grateful and really excited that I get to carry this theme of bridging science and bridging spirituality from my time as a student and now as a professional, as a doula and a birth worker, it, um, it all feels pretty fitting and exciting. So thank you all so much and congrats everyone. Thank you. Next, congratulations to Master of Arts in Integral Health with a concentration in life physics, Heather Lutz, who was not able to attend the ceremony today. And so also congratulations to Doctor of Philosophy in Integral Health, Julie Darges, whose dissertation title is A Heuristic Study of Poetry as a Non-Invasive Healing Modality Incorporating Gas Discharge Visualization of the Human Subtle Energy System. Please put on your hood symbolically that symbolizes the doctoral degree and move your tassel from right to left and uh, uh, thank you for your speech earlier. It'd be wonderful if you'd like to say a few more words. 
I would like to thank you, Dr. Brophy, for being my advisor for all those years. You were so wonderful to me. And I had this amazing um, committee um, um, with Dr. Padma being my chair, Dr. Gaitan Chevalier, he's here with us today, and uh, Dr. Patricia Malouf. Um, congratulations to my fellow graduates. I'm so happy to be with you and so many of you I've studied with, um, but I would like to say a special word to my students because I have been working as a teacher at CIHS now for a year. I just finished yesterday my fourth quarter as the teacher of academic writing and I'm learning so much from the students. It's really amazing. The research is amazing. And so I, it's, a, it's a bit odd because with COVID, we didn't have a chance to have the graduation last year, but I am really happy to be affiliated with CAHS on many dimensions. So thank you all so very much. Thank you. And congratulations again to our School of Integral Health graduates and all the CHS graduates. Now is my great pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker. Eight years ago, I read an article in the, in the Huffington Post titled, From Liberal Education to Integral Education. I was thrilled by that article because to me it expressed very clearly and in a way that is accessible to both the general public and scholarly community, what an integral education is, why integral education is better, more inclusive and more advanced than merely a liberal arts education, why integral education will be the emerging wave of the future, that will lead to a peaceful global society. The article was so good, I felt a little irritated that the author's lucidity and writing, uh, lucidity of writing and thought, uh, he must have some sort of trick, I thought. Uh, I vowed to myself, I would figure out how to write something better someday and get one up on that author. Four years of time passed, and as the universe seems to conspire around these sort of things, something better than getting one up on that author happened, I got connected with him. Joe came to visit CIHS campus. He immediately recognized the coherence of CIHS's mission and purpose with his own. And ever since he has become an invaluable advisor and mentor to us at CIHS and to myself in particular. And now he has joined the ranks of trustees of CIHS. He was president for 17 years of the California Institute for Integral Studies where he grew academic enrollment and public programs by multiples and championed, the, championed valiantly the cause of integral education. Joe has a knack for seeing integral principles operating through others and promoting them and lifting them up. For example, in his early scholarly interest in the natural philosophy of John Wilkins, a 17th century Anglican leader, Wilkins was one of the few people ever to head both Oxford and Cambridge universities a transdisciplinary polymath, Wilkins made forefront contributions to the fields of religion, foundations of linguistics to science. Uh, Wilkins created the international metric system we use today as a political and religious leader in a time of great turmoil. Wilkins was a naturally integral leader. Thomas Jefferson was influenced by the works of Wilkins, as surely were other founding fathers of the United States. And I like to think the, the key to the success of the American Revolution itself was its fundamentally integral nature, uh, but that's uh, beyond the scope of this brief introduction. Uh, recently, Joe got a paper on Wilkins published in a very distinguished British journal on which paper Joe cites CIHS as his affiliation now. Joe continues to boost the scholarly reputation of CIHS as a university. For example, he is co-editor of a special issue of the Beijing International Review of Education Journal, in which, which I have contributed an essay, as has CIHS's uh, Dean for Integral Education, Dr. Sean Edgman Hargens has contributed an essay, as well as uh, Joe himself. So please welcome now our commencement speaker, Joseph L. Subiando. Thank you so much, President Brophy, for that wonderful uh, comments, and I really appreciate them very much. Um, fellow trustees, faculty, administrators, students, guests, and graduates, as the 2021 graduates of the California Institute for Human Science, you are the first graduates 
of the regionally accredited CIHS. Congratulations to you and to CIHS. You and the alumni who have preceded you have demonstrated to the accreditors that the distinctive academic vision and mission of CIHS contributes substantially to American higher education. The CIHS Board of Trustees, the President, the administrators and the faculty have dedicated themselves to make this recognition possible. But without you, students and now alumni, it would have been pointless because you are the reason for a CIHS. Your education is worth our very best efforts. As the beneficiaries of a CIHS integral education, you know well that the distinctive model of education in connecting the many areas of learning, understanding the fullness of what it means to be human, drawing on the wisdom of all people, and including multiple ways of knowing is especially relevant today. Only an inclusive model of education that honors and celebrates diversity in people, ideas, and cultures could have inspired and prepared you to challenge the pressing issues currently posed by global fragmentation and national divides. However, the work of accreditation is not over for CIHS. In fact, it is only beginning. CIHS must sustain its dynamic growth and increase its influence on its alumni and higher education. To track its continuing evolution, CIHS will submit annual reports to the accrediting commission that document its progress. For the next review in several years, the commission will ask CIHS, what has been the impact of a CIHS education on its alumni? While an institution can eloquently proclaim its educational values, only the alumni can document its claims. You alone attest to CIHS's reason for being. So let's briefly explore what CIHS hopes that you will be able to say about the impact of its education on you. An excellent starting point to think about this is to consider the founding mission of CIHS. The university's website indicates that Dr. Hiroshi Motoyama, the founder of CIHS, envisioned that academic and scientific work of CIHS would play a crucial role in the emergence of a universal spiritual outlook that will help to build common ground between the world's religions, cultural, and ethnic groups, paving the way for humanity to take its next evolutionary step toward a harmonious, peaceful, and sustainable global society." End quote. Unquestionably, this is a high ideal. It offers a vision that may well be more relevant today than when Dr. Motoyama founded CIHS. All of us at CIHS hope that you will continue to live and exemplify the core values of Dr. Motoyama, that you will develop personal growth and well being and that you will actively advance an integrated, compassionate society. Dr. Motoyama's vision significantly resonates with the message of Dr. Martin Luther King, who referred to creating a beloved community to heal the social divides prevalent in our country and in the world. 
Like Dr. Motoyama, Dr. King well understood our interconnectedness. At Stanford University, he stated that, quote, I can't be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can't be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. Several years ago, Robert Thurman, distinguished professor of religion at Columbia University and holder of the first endowed chair in the West in Buddhist studies, insightfully noted that we are living in the second Renaissance. He noted that the first Renaissance, traditionally dated from the 14th through the 16th centuries, was devoted to the rediscovery of ancient Greek and Roman texts. The second Renaissance is devoted to the rediscovery of ancient Asian texts. As beneficiaries of both Renaissances, we see an integrated world culture emerging that not only draws upon the best of the traditional Eastern and Western culture, but also of elsewhere. In fact, we are blessed to be living in an emerging global renaissance in which we consider ideas from all over the world and integrate them into shaping our own multi perspectives. Sri Aurobindo, a 20th century leader in the theory and practice of integral education, was educated in the United Kingdom, not in his native India. Aware of the limitations of Western education, he proposed a concept of unity in diversity as the primary educational platform for a new post-colonial India. He stated, quote, but freedom is as necessary to life as law and regime. Diversity is as necessary as unity to our true completeness. Existence is only one only in its essence and totality. In its play, it is necessarily multiform. Absolute uniformity would mean the cessation of life, while on the other hand, the vigor of the pulse of life may be measured by the richness of the diversities which it creates. At the same time, while diversity is essential for power and fruitfulness of life, unity is necessary for its order, arrangement, and stability. Unity we must create, but not necessarily uniformity. If a person could realize a perfect spiritual unity, no sort of uniformity would be necessary for the utmost play of diversity would be securely possible, end quote. Compare this excerpt to one written by Dr. Motoyama, who in his Science and Evolution of Consciousness, published in 1978, recognized the need to remedy cultural fragmentation. He stated, in earlier civilizations, such as classical Greece or ancient China, mystics and scientists were neither separate nor antagonistic. But during the succeeding centuries, particularly in the West, the two groups diverged to the point where they became mutually exclusive. Unity and diversity, spirit and matter, mind and body were split. Both Sri Aurobindo and Dr. Motoyama were clearly ahead of their times. As we can see, their perspectives echoed in a recent collection of essays entitled Integrative Learning and Action that was published in 2006. 
it includes the following thinking, the, the, the forward thinking perspectives of scholars and leaders in higher education, including Margaret Wheatley, Arthur Zions, Daniel Goldman, David Scott, Rihanna Eisler, Diana Chapman Walsh, John Kabat-Zinn, and Peter Zenge, all superstars at the turn of this century in inspiring the current integral movement, all aligned with the far-reaching and all-inclusive themes of Dr. Modiyama. For example, in the introduction, they point out that a common theme of their book is, quote, the connection of science, art, and spirituality. They argue that this connection, quote, is not unexpected because the origins of fragmentation and the loss of wholeness originated largely in the Western 17th century science revolution and 18th century enlightenment. With the disassociation of these three knowledge fears, science, art, and spirituality, the three core strands of every culture throughout history, end quote. The contributors also note that another, in quote, another important theme of their book involves the practices that could situate the learner in a different relationship with the self and the environment, end quote. They assert, quote, the call to wholeness has attracted leaders in education and business who have grown weary of the fragmentation and isolation brought, brought on by the modernity and post-modernity, as well as the social and environmental consequences that have resulted from the loss of primal connection to a universe alive with meaning. Diana Chapman Walsh, former president of Wellesley College, in her contribution to the collection of essays entitled The Search for Meeting and Uncommon Values, raises her concern regarding the increasing materialistic values of current college students as documented by the UCLA Higher Education Research Center, led by Alexander and the late Helen Aston. Welsh notes that UCLA survey indicates that 75% of college freshmen are searching for meaning and purpose and are interested in spirituality. She contends that it is evident that they need greater sophistication in thinking about how to set priorities, decide what truly matters to them, what constitutes a life well lived, and how they can set out on what Jack Cornfield has called a path with heart, end quote. It has been the intention of CIHS to provide you with an education that contributes significantly to your building and sustaining compassionate communities by your cherishing the interrelationships of each person to the whole and in acquiring the following virtues, integrating knowledge, action and love, exploring spirituality and consciousness, connecting diverse cultural traditions, linking the inner and outer dimensions of life, recognizing the individual as part of a collective community, and lastly, incorporating experiential learning. All of this brings us back to the founding mission of Dr. Modiyama. At this 2021 CIHS commencement, we hope that you will commence to live and retain the values upon which this university was founded and derives its unique and soulful contribution to higher education. Let us look forward to your life values, reflecting the convergence envisioned by Dr. Motoyama. 
in the end, this is the ultimate justification and celebration of this graduation. Congratulations to you, your families, your friends, and to all who have helped make this day possible. Congratulations to CIHS, its inspiring faculty, and its committed trustees, administrators, and staff. Thank you. And now back to Kiara, our Master of Ceremony. Thank you, Joseph Subiondo, for that inspirational um, speech for everyone, it, truly. And at this time, I'd like to invite our guest speaker, Dr. Milena Braticevic. Dr. Milena Braticevic is a graduate of CIHS and a successful one out in the, the world. And she's taking her research to, at the corporate level and also at the graduate level. And she's teaching people from an individual and collective perspective. She provides integral education for those that she meets and she presents to. Welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Milena Braticevic. Thank you so much, Kiera. Uh, thank you, everyone. It is so wonderful to be here with all of you today. I'm extremely proud of um, all the graduates. Um, I would like to extend my congratulations to you, as well as the faculty. Um, and I'm so proud to be a CIHS alumna. Um, it's really wonderful that um, and this was such an incredible year for the school uh, with the accreditation uh, going through. So again, sincere congratulations on that. And thank you for doing all that hard work um, to really um, make all of our research more recognizable. So what I would like to do to today is share with you my experience since my graduation two years ago in 2019. Um, I graduated with a PhD in integral health, and um, uh, since then I've been teaching my program that I developed at uh, CIHS um, on mental resilience, um, which is actually based on non-dual awareness. I've been teaching this program at the University of San Diego, uh, Continuing Education, as well as University of Toronto School of Continuing Studies. Um, and also many organizations and, and corporations um, in Canada, as well as the United States uh, throughout the pandemic. In my workshops, I'm often asked to um, explain the difference between the conscious and the unconscious mind and between awareness and consciousness. And each time I'm reminded about the importance of consciousness education because as long as people don't know how to use awareness to bring to light what's deep in their unconscious mind to the conscious level, we will not be able to solve complex uh, problems and create more sustainable solutions. Addressing uh, the problems such as rising rates of um, anxiety and depression, increasing polarization, the climate crisis, socioeconomic, uh, political and public health issues really require us to raise our level of consciousness to a more unitive or integral level where we can experience ourselves as a part of something bigger and feel deeply connected with one another and, as well as with nature. During the pandemic, studies showed that more than 50% of the population in North America reported a decline in mental health with the majority reporting moderate to severe uh, symptoms of anxiety and depression, which really means that we're failing uh, to prevent um, these mental disorders on a very large scale. Also, 30% of young adults have contemplated suicide during the pandemic, while 40% of uh, white collar professionals have considered leaving their jobs due to overwork and um, the risk of burnout. Addressing all these issues is about consciousness education, changing the paradigm from uh, diagnosis and treatment to prevention and early intervention. It's about learning ways to develop the mind so that we can perceive the complexity and integration and interconnectedness um, so that we can create more sustainable uh, solutions that will benefit humanity in the long term. 
Over the past few months, I've also been working um, to create a new program on psychological safety in the workplace, which is becoming a very important topic um, in organizations and corporations because they are realizing that to solve complex problems, they need to create a culture of learning, authenticity, innovation, and true collaboration. This means creating conditions for the highest order of diversity and inclusion where people are appreciated for who they are and they're not afraid to speak up, share their ideas, be curious and contribute in their unique ways. I really see psychological safety as a great way to introduce consciousness education in the workplace and create a more humane way to live and work together. I believe it was John Kabat-Zinn at one of the mindfulness conferences that I attended who said that one can't really work in this field without be, being an activist. I believe it is important to work on practical applications um, of our research. I really um, encourage um, all, of, all of you to do that. It is wonderful to see new graduates in the fields of integral studies, comparative religion, psychology, and integral health. Beth, Tony, Kate, Francesca, Heather, Neda, and Julie. You are all in a unique position to use your knowledge gained at CIHS to make a real difference in the world. I congratulate you once again and encourage you to be an activist to be activists and collaborate with others to bring about change that the world needs today. I wish you all the luck with your future work and I encourage you to stay connected to your CIHS community as that has meant the world to me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Milena Bratichevic. And Dr. Borfi, I invite you for the closing speech. Thank, thank you, Chiara. Thank you so much, Dr. Branicevic. Your work uh, is so important for the world today. So um, our commencement speaker spoke eloquently about the first modern Renaissance in the West as rediscovery of ancient Greek texts and the second Renaissance as rediscovery of ancient Asian texts. I was struck by the theme of rediscovery. Why do we have to keep rediscovering knowledge? Why do we keep losing it? Cycles of loss and rediscovery are not unique to the West. Christianity was embraced in China in the seventh century Tang Dynasty, later banned, it was completely forgotten in China until modern times. As we progress into another Renaissance, part of our collective task should be to not forget this time. And the direct experiential aspect of integral education that CIHS deploys helps us in that not forgetting. On maintaining tradition, these graduation gowns are a form of tradition. They hark back to the Middle Ages. At drafty cold European universities, they wore these robes to keep warm. We still wear them today, even if the graduation ceremony is held under a hot sun or now on the internet. There's an old Marx Brothers movie, a comedy that lampoons these robes. The movie is titled Horse Feathers, in a scene in the movie, Groucho Marx's character, Professor Hackenbush, is buffooning around and he gets all the faculty dancing around in these graduation robes. And they are all singing a chorus with a refrain that goes, whatever it is, I'm against it. What Groucho was lampooning is not just these robes, but also the image of conventional academics as closed-minded simply repeating a fixed, unchanging, narrow worldview, a negative exclusivity. Whatever it is, I'm against it, they said. That highlights the essence of what is different about CIHS from conventional universities. The mission of CIHS is about change, inclusivity, evolving worldviews. Whatever it is here at CIHS, we're for it, not against it. As long as, as long as it can be researched in a rigorous and academically sound manner. A favorite quote of mine from one of the first modern Western philosophers to significantly integrate East and West philosophies, Arthur Schopenhauer said, thus the task is not so much to see what no one has yet seen, but to think 
what nobody has yet thought about that which everybody sees. To think what nobody has yet thought about that which everybody sees. That quote says so much about what we strive to do here at CHS. Dr. Motiyama founded as a mission for CHS to push the leading edge of social cultural evolution and to lead toward a more peaceful global society, body, mind, and spirit, ancient, modern, and future, scientifically, philosophically, and spiritually, east and west, internally and externally, solar and extrasolar, known and unknown. It is that emphasis on all aspects inclus inclusively and pushing into the unknown with the intent to apply what we find there for the betterment of humanity and all sentient beings. Today's graduates, through what they have accomplished, exemplify that mission. One final story from the wonderful American mythologist, uh, Joseph Campbell, is illustrative. Joseph Campbell told a story about a conversation he had with his spiritual guru. Campbell lamented to his guru about living in a world with so many terrible things happening. Conflict, violence, struggle, suffering. Campbell's guru leaned in toward him and told him, the secret is you must say yes to the world and figure out how to live in the world and create positive, uplifting action in the world because the world needs you and your good effect. Graduates, it is our hope that your time at CHS has helped you just a little towards such an endeavor. Thank you again, congratulations. Congratulations to our graduates and thank you everybody, all of the graduates guests here today. So this will, this, we will close uh, this commencement uh, with uh, the processional uh, video. Thank you everybody, congratulations. Thank you.